Hello and welcome to Q Sports. I am Omudu Gajaga. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. On the show, Tijan Keita, one time African record holder in the junior category and also gold medal winner in 2013 in the African Youth Games in Wari, Nigeria, is going to join me on the show shortly. And on tonight's show, we are going to talk about the Gambia Football Federation League, both male, female, second division and first division. Is the league going to be nullified? Well, it depends on the extension of the state of public emergency by the National Assembly members. If it goes that way, well, the Football Federation says the league is going to be cancelled. And the team that is in the first and the second place, that is Real de Banjul and Armed Forces, are going to represent the Gambia in the Calf Club Championships. And Ahmad Cham will join me later on the show to discuss some of these items on the menu tonight. But first, um, let's talk to Tijan Keita, who is joining us all the way from Extremadura, a region in Spain. Tijan, welcome to the show. Hello, Momodu. Thank you. Tijan, you were an athlete who competed for the Gambia in the 2013 African Youth Games, the first of its kind in Wari, Nigeria, and you broke the African record in the 400 meters and went on to win the gold medal. In that competition, you were there in the Gambia's um, 100 meters with the likes of Asan Fai, Alaji Sonko, Ibrahim Akamara, Aliu Juf, and even Wandifa Sane. Um, take us back to this competition way back seven years ago in Wari, Nigeria. Yeah, Momodo, I, I thank God for that competition. And I thank the Gambia Athletic Federation and the Ministry of Transport for the opportunity me to be able to compete in that competition as my first international exhibition. So that was a competition that was like very hard because there were all African countries there from all my time. So I went all out because it was my first competition. I say, here yeah, is do or die. I have to do it for my country, putting in my national jersey for the first time. So I have to go all out and do all what I can. Well, as a young athlete at the time, that was your first exposure at a major international competition, even though it's at the junior category. How has that saved your career from then on? Uh, we will talk about how you went to Spain, but first, after that competition, you also went to represent the Gambia at the Youth Games in Donetsk, Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, that, that competition, I was competed without any athletic experience because um, by the, I was a youth and it was my first competition. So I was just running with the little experience I have in the Gambia during the, those days. So I, I got an automatic qualification to the World Championship, World Youth Championships in Ukraine, Donetsk, where I also represented the Gambia. And I came out third in my heat and became the only African to proceed to the semi-finals, but I was disqualified because I touched the lane of my naval, naval athlete. Well, um, that must be a very difficult one to take at that time, but um, you would be excused because, like you said, you're inexperienced, you're a junior athlete, and perhaps maybe um, your coach at the time also maybe was not the best of coaches. Um, coming from there, you went to um, Senegal, at a high performance center there and you had an athletics club there, competed for a while and later you left for Spain. Why did you leave Senegal for Spain? Yeah, because I have competed for Gambia in many competitions, many international competitions, not only in Nigeria, in Donetsk, I have been to other countries, but a, a, this country, um, Ethiopia, I have been to Mauritius, you know, I go, so I have been to all those countries. So later I got this um, contact with this team in Senegal called Jira, that they wanted me to go there and they spoke with the Federation and the Federation contacted me that this club in Senegal wants you to go there. And then I said, okay, no problem. Then I proceed to Senegal, but it was even a very hard decision because for the first time of my life, having a contract going out of your country, so I said, okay, I will go because there were some athletes, Gambian athletes who were already there. So I said, okay, 
So when I moved in there, I was running, I was training, and also I did best my best there. And I have crowned, I was crowned like the champion of Senegal for almost three years. And then lately, I came back to the Gambia, 2016. Lately, I was not considered for any international competition. I was not taken to any competition. I was not considered in going to any training camp. So I don't know why that was happening because for me, I was running very fast. It was just that by then there was this youth that just came in and he was running fast too. And I was Who very is happy this about particular that. UTN? It's called I think something like um, Tony. Yeah, he was running fast. Because okay. since 2013 to 16, I was the only Gambian athlete that was running 47 seconds in the 400 meters. And that was not what we want, the Gambia. So we wanted people that will run fast time and to come in so that we can have a strong team. So when that guy came in and was running that time, I was so happy that I have someone that is going to compete me and we can have a, a strong team to represent the Gambia in any international competition. Okay. So you felt neglected when it comes to selection, but you don't know the reason. Could it be down to your performance must have deteriorated at the time? Well, it's true that, that um, I was training and like as we all do in Gambia, we don't have those training facilities. So I was training like the way that we used to train in the Gambia. So you can see that my level was just at the same at the same position. Like it was not moving. It was not okay. going down. It was not moving. Mm. So I don't think it's due to my um, dropping of performance because I was never dropping performance in any time. If I could recall. Okay. So later on, you took the journey to go to Spain and try your luck in in Spanish athletics. Tell us when you first arrived in Spain. How was it like? Yeah, when I first arrived in Spain, it was hard because, as you know, moving to another country, first of all, you need to learn their culture, you need to learn their language, you need to learn many things to be able to associate yourself within the society, especially when you are doing sport. So you have to make sure you can communicate with the coach and your training partner. So if you don't speak their language, you cannot have all those things easy for you. So first of all, when I came in the first year, it was like a, a rehearsal for me. I was just trying to get used to the system and knowing that Europe is always cold. It's not like Africa. So, and secondly, Africa, we only have one season and that is the outdoor season. But in Europe, we have indoors and outdoor. So if you compare them, you have to train, you have to prepare for, 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 for the both seasons. So the first year was like a rehearsal for me. Okay. In terms of your uh, performance level, um, you were running the 400 meters when you were competing for the Gambia and your club in Senegal um, until at some point you were three times in a row champion in Senegal. Now that you've combined both the 100 meters, the 200 meters, and in these categories, your timing seemed to be improving a little bit. Um, from the 100 meters, 1063 to 1045, 200 meters also from 2175 to 2104. Um, do you think you have the pedigree with your training and your coach to be able to beat this time to um, at least a lower level to compete at the international stage? Yes, because first of all, like what I normally tell my fellow athletes and athletes back home in Gambia, is that you need to believe in your coach and believe in yourself. Because if people out there on top of the pavilion clapping for you and cheering in this, so I why you yourself cannot believe in yourself. Okay. So, so it, it, it's Came basically for you, it's working so hard to make sure that you, you beat this time. Yeah, I work so hard. I train four hours every day, two hours in the morning, two hours in the, in the night, and I train 23 hours in the week. Your club is Capex Extra Maduro. How big a club is this in Spain? This club, I can say, is one of the biggest clubs in Spain because we are in the first division and we are trying to go to, to the highest level and that division is called Division Honor. 
And that division is where you have teams like Barcelona, teams like Villarreal, Valencia. So they are in that league. So there are clubs that will proceed me. Club like Barcelona, they, they, they wanted me to go since last year. They were following me. They talked to my agent, they talked to my coach, but I was not willing to go. And I'm still with this club because this club, they have stand for me a lot. And I'm like, I promise them that I have to take them to the division or not. In terms of your connection with the Gambia, since you left, have you been in touch with the Gambia Athletics Association and also maybe your former coach? And is there any plans for Tijan to come and compete for the Gambia, maybe in the World Athletics Championship, in the World uh, Olympic Games, maybe um, this year? The Olympic Games, unfortunately, because of the coronavirus pandemic, has been postponed in Japan, Tokyo, and it will be held next year. Yeah, I am in contact with the Gambia Athletic Association, but I only talk with few people there, and I'm also in contact with the head coach, who is Maria Masala. I also am in contact with some coaches down there. So. They, they reached out to me, the Federation, last year that I can, like, I have to come to Gambia and run for Gambia in, in other competitions. And I was preparing for the African Championship this year. And I was ready to come to Gambia and went with the team, go, to the, go with the team, sorry, to, to Algeria to compete in the, in the African Championship. Okay. Uh, but in terms of um, being open to naturalization in Spain, if the opportunity comes for you today because your timing has improved and you're performing very well and the Spanish National Athletics Federation wants you to be, um, uh, you know, naturalized first and, you know, compete for, for Spain and then the Gambia needs you. What are you going to do? Well, there is no place like home. I can say the Federation is bigger than me but the Gambia is bigger than the Federation. So what do you do in your country? Always stays in your country. So there is no place like home. So last year, the, the head coach of the Spanish athletic team reached out to me that he was interested in me to join the Lille team. Because currently, I am the third fastest athlete in Spain. But I am never given the chance to proceed to any championship in Spain up to final because I'm not a Spanish, I'm not yet a, nas a national of, of Spain. So I think that is something that I have to think about very well, because right now, if you look at the situation, Gambia is a country whereby we need many things to develop our sport, and that is leading to many athletes to change nationality. So some of those I have things, my team. maybe you can go into detail. What are some of the challenges that Gambian athletes would face, um, leading them to being frustrated and even um, want to compete for other countries uh, after they naturalize for um, certain adopted countries? Well, if you look at it now, there are a lot of Gambian athletes that are naturalizing in Senegal. And we have a lot of athletes that are naturalizing in Europe. And all those athletes could have gone for Gambia, but the problem is the motivation. The mo a mo like motivating someone is not just to give the bar on the bar, but at least to give them a greener spot like whereby there will be someone important to the society. Imagine you going for international competition, leaving your family back home, and you are not giving, you are giving an allowance, nothing more than five thousand dollars. So th those are some of the frustrations that Gambian athletes faced, um, forcing them to take drastic decisions, that is to, if the opportunities are created, to go and compete for other countries rather, their, rather than their country of birth. Yeah, because if you, if you have to, if you have to like, compare them in Europe, what they will pay you is uh, not going to be nothing less than $20,000, uh, 20,000 euros. It depends on the country you are. And you compare that one with 500, uh, $5,000, you know? Well, sometimes you have to think about the money, but also sometimes you have to think about yourself, like what you want. I value my career, I value my sport more than anything, and I value my country more than anything. Money is lasting. 
Well, Xi Jinping, but you seem you to be at... a very big patriot there. And thank you very much for your time coming on Q Sports. I'm afraid this is all that we have time for. Okay, so, thank, thank you so much. That's Tijan Keita there. Um, we were talking about his athletics career and the chances for him to come back and compete for the Gambia again in a major international championship. The last time he wore Gambian colors was in 2013 in the African Athletics Championship that is in the youth category in Wari, Nigeria, where he became the 400 meters gold medalist winner and also the record holder at that time, that was seven years ago, but now he plies his athletics career in Spain, in Extra Maduro, a club called Capex Extra Maduro. Uh, we are going to take a short break, and when we come back, Coach Amacham is going to join me as we talk about the Gambia Football Federation's decision hanging in the balance, whether the league is going to be nullified or it will resume sometime in June, depends on the decision made by our country's lawmakers, whether the state of public emergency is going to be extended or otherwise. So the National League resumption hangs in the balance. We're going to take this short break, and when we come back, we will talk more details about that. Um, Amat Cham is with me in the studio and now we are going to talk about the Gambia Football Federation. After having an executive meeting on the 9th on Saturday, talking about the public state of emergency. Is it going to be extended or not? We are not certain about that. But if it is extended for a reasonable period of time, these are some of the permutations from the Gambia Football Federation. The league, both male and female, will be nullified and there will be no champion declared. And also, there will be no relegation, no promotion across the board for both male and female leagues. Amat Cham, <coughs> what do you make of this um, uh, current situation at the Gambia Football Federation? Um, they are depending on a certain decision from the executive, that is, the Gambia's National Assembly plus the Gambia government. Uh, thank you very much. I think it is beyond them because the, it's the government that decides whether sports will take place or not or whether there will be public gatherings or not. And if the government still feel it's not safe for people to gather, it's going to be very difficult for football to be played. And if football is not played, I think, uh, yes, some teams will not be happy because if a team is leading in the second division and had all the opportunities to be promoted to the first division and just because of the coronavirus and there is no football played, you lose your points and play in the second division next season. No player, no coach, no team president will be happy with that. But at the same time, health is number one. Everywhere you go to, we have to have that health that we need to play sports. If we are not healthy, it's going to be very difficult to do any sport. So I think the Football Federation are on track. Let's just wait what is going to happen from the National Assembly or from the executive to see whether it is going to be extended or not. If it is extended, as they said, a reasonable period. A reasonable period, if they extend for 45 days, that is more than reasonable for them to say, yes, we cannot play football. Because if you want to resume, you must allow the teams at least four weeks to train. In terms of this um, decision, some people criticized it for uh, being too panicking. Um, they said the Gambia Football Federation could have waited for at least a little bit time before saying that, okay, the league could be nullified or, or show. Maybe probably in June, there is still some reasonable amount of time to be able to <laughs> rush the league. Yes, it's halfway <laughs> in the first division and probably in the second division there are more matches to be played as well. Right, the second division have not have even started their second round and the first division only played one game. So you will see that it's going to be very difficult and you also have to put the health of the players on the table because if you want to play every week two games, it will not be fair to the football players. And these are people who are going to entertain people, and these are people who want to 
give their best. They must be in that shape to give their best. You must give them the opportunity. So if it is not possible to play football, I don't think they are rushing because they are giving you two situations. If this happens, this is what is going to happen. If this happens, this is what is going to happen. Now let's see what is going to happen. There is a possibility that the league will be completed. What will happen if the National Assembly say, no, we are not going to extend the, the state of public emergency? And then that means people can go back to their normal life. And if that happens, the Football Federation can organize their games. Unless the Minister of Youth and Sports say no sports in Gambia. If that happens, that's a different thing. But Part of the decisions also, Amat, is that um, the current um, holders of the first and the second position that is um, in the first division will represent the Gambia in the CAF club championships. Yeah, I think uh, other countries are doing, it, uh, are doing it in a different form. They allowing teams to go on a playoff but this time i think the two teams that are in the first and second uh, that are in the first and second place have the muscles to represent the gambia real is the leading that's real the banjul and armed forces is second so th i think these two teams have the muscles to represent the gambia in the calf competitions and that is now if they desire to do so it's not that it's a must they have to if they have the desire to go on and say we will co compete that's another thing. So it depends on the teams to also. The teams can say, no, we don't have the muscles to go. Then that means there is no team for Gambia in the, cup, in the, Af in the uh, CAF competitions. But yes, the teams are given the opportunity. They can and they can decline. Naritan could also be cancelled. And you know it means that the Gambia Football Federation will have to amend their calendar for September. And basically, the league, if it is going to commence, probably it's going to be in October. Th that are some of the projections that they've made. Um, what do you make of that? Yeah, they are not going to cancel Navitan. What they will be canceling is the Super Navitan, that is the zonals, that is under the PV of the Gambia Football Federation. They are the organizers of that one. Now, if there is no league, probably they are going to give opportunity to Navitans to make sure they play early. And when they play early, they make sure they, they complete their inheritance by September. And when they complete by September, then you have the teams, you give the teams the opportunity to start their training even in September because most of the first and second division players will not be playing in the inheritance. And the coaches will be in a position to resume early, start their preparation, and prepare for the league so that the league can commence at least in October. In terms of um, revenue lost, um, we've sat for a considerable amount of time, but the same Football Federation through uh, funding from FIFA, they call it the COVID-19 Relief Fund, it's still the same as the, uh, what do you call the FIFA forward money, which came a little bit earlier. Uh, over the last week, we've seen that clubs were giving $150,000 each from first to second division and also uh, regional clubs as well. Um, such a move. I think it's a good move. It's something that should be paid, to, uh, that uh, the Federation committed to pay to the teams and I think they did what they were supposed to do. And I've even seen teams using this money to give it back to their players and their officials. And one team is Fortune. Yeah, I've so Fortune and BK Milan did that. and. I think they should be applauded, they did very well for their players and their officials to give them back this money so that they can use it whatever in because of the situation they find themselves and I think the management of this team should be applauded for doing that and I think they did very well. You think they did very well and now finally Amat, we're going to talk about uh, the resumption of football, at least in Germany. <laughs> you were in Germany <laughs> <laughs> some time ago uh, when you were doing your um, studies in, in coaching and sports. Salka played against Borussia Dortmund. <laughs> Borussia Dortmund won the game by four goals to nil. But football is not the same at this <laughs> as it used to be. It's a contact sport. And then a player <laughs> is being substituted. He comes to the bench. He don't shake hand with his teammates and the teammates are sitting observing the social distancing or if you like physical distancing. It, for me, it's really boring also to play in an empty stadium, but health is the big question here. Yeah, it's, health is number one because if you are not healthy, you find it very difficult to play. Like as a football player, this uh, Cesc Fabrega said, it was very boring for him. It was just like he was watching a training game and 
I watch uh, the game between Salka and Dortmund, which is always a very tense game because they are about 32 kilometers from each other. It is called the Rivia Derby. It's a very intense derby. It is in one of those derbies that a goalkeeper first scored in the Bundesliga, and that was Jens Lehmann. He scored for Salka against Dortmund, and uh, two years later, he transferred to Dortmund. So you see that rivalry between these two teams, and they are very close. And last two seasons ago, uh, Dortmund was leading by four goals to zero in Dortmund, and Salka came from behind and scored four goals in the second half. But a dramatic was, comeback it was. Four, four. So you see, it is always a game that you expect a lot. And yes, it's very interesting that football is back. Let's hope that when uh, today, after the game today, teams go back and test their players and the, everything is okay, no positive cases, everything is normal, then they can move on next week. Because they have, from now, the, the Bundesliga have only eight games to play so that they will crown their champions. It's also good that football is back so that the decisions will be taken on the pitch, not off the pitch. Uh, finally, just before we go, there was a situation where there was a free kick and normally in free kick situations, players, you know, get very close to each other and then the free kick is taken. And you could see some acres of space between the players. Yeah, I also saw one between Haaland and uh, one of the defenders who mm -hmm. was stopping him, but it was a big problem because there was a big push and pull and at the end of the day, the referee had to intervene. So. Yeah, football is contact sports. We can do all these things outside the pitch, observe the one meter, observe the when you celebrate, you don't hawk and all those things. But even in one of the games, the players decided to hawk yeah, after other, scoring yeah, a goal. So you see, yeah, it is going to take time for people to live with these things. But I think gradually football will come back to normal, where people will go into the stadium and watch games and be very happy following their teams like you be in an empty stadium Dortmund even had to try to go and at least wave and wave no fans like they wave no fans and so I'm afraid <laughs> that is where we are going to draw the curtains and thank you very much for watching this broadcast this is Skew Sports and I'm Mumutu Kajika until we come your way next week keep on sporting and bye for now